Hey, hello and welcome to this video. This is me setting up a scene from scratch for my ArtStation Challenge project that started yesterday. I'll put a link in the description. This is really for anyone in the challenge as well as myself or anyone setting up Unreal projects uh, from scratch. I should really save myself a template, but for some reason or another I've never bothered to do that. But saving a custom made template uh, would be a good idea. I usually just because scenes have nighttime settings and all sorts of stuff. I don't mind setting up from scratch. Um, sometimes there's new features and so on, so it's worth getting a refresher on this every now and then. Um, so once I launch Unreal, I've got this project browser window, and you've got some templates here. It might be tempting just to go straight for blank or, uh, you know, and start fresh, which isn't an issue, but I do like to start with, and I think most people do, um, start with either a first person shooter or a third person, because then you can actually press play nice and easily and see your environment uh, from, from a character's perspective, or you can also use the third person character as a stand-in for metrics for your scene, um, and that's really useful. So I'm gonna go with third person character uh, and I'm going to name my project, so... I know they do multiple challenges through the year, but uh, this is what I'm at. And I'm going to go straight into my folder. I'm going to select that. And this is where I'm going to create my uh, third person project. Yeah, so there's usually like new features or there's little things that you want to set up um, and change when whatever you go into uh, a new Unreal project. Because I mean, they've got lots of new features. For example, the first thing I'm going to do here is go into my plugins and I'm going to go with, I'm going to type in geometry and I'm going to see if we've got the modeling tools, uh, geometry mode, geometry script. I don't know whether I want geometry script. I've never really used it. Uh, I'll enable it just uh, just in case I decide to use it for whatever reason. Um, also, so let's type in modeler mode. So this is the kind of stuff that you would have to watch a separate tutorial on. But I'm just having a look down. Modeling tools in edit mode. So that's beta. Be a, you know, official on different. And then water is my final one. Um, and that, maybe I've missed it, but, you know, Unreal 5 doesn't seem to ask whether I want to use ray tracing anymore. I guess that's because they've got Lumen. But what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to check whether my um, ray tracing settings are on, because I have a, a, a ray tracing capable graphics card. Um, so I'm not sure if that's an editor or pro, uh, project settings. So... Um, Support hardware ray tracing. I'm going to turn that on. Use hardware ray tracing for Lumen when available. I feel like that's going to be more, um, it's going to be better for me because Lumen's amazing. Um, but when it, it when it falls back on some hardware ray tracing as well, um, it's even better. And I don't know if I need to enable these. Uh, because we'll use the virtual shadow map, that should be good enough. Um, I'll do a little tests for this. Uh, ray trace skylight sounds good. Um, I'm not sure that, you know, I'm not sure that I'm bothered. Um, especially with Lumen and all that. So I think that's pretty much it. So ray tracing turned on, water. I've turned on geometry script just in case. Um, and then this editor is now going to need to be restarted. So, and then from this point, I'm also going to probably make a new level. Um, so I'm going to go to my content. Let's go with just, uh, that's already in the content folder. Um, 
Station Challenge folder. So this is where my content's going to be. Um, and I'm just going to make uh, a level here because I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to have one level or at least two levels, maybe one with the, you know, all the modular pieces or whatever I choose to make. Um, so let's go with uh, a new level here. It's going to be main. Map main. And we still got access to all that other stuff in these other folders. So when I look into characters, mannequins, um, meshes, you see we've got access to the different meshes and uh, whatever, um, as well as the map being in there as well. So person map. So we can reopen that map if we want to test something out. Like that could be a really good test scene when I'm doing VFX, if I'm doing anything like, you know, um, depending on how far the project goes. And then, you know, for me, it's a visual project though. And I've got my main map here and we're going to set this up from scratch as well, because we don't really want that, that fake sky background sort of thing. I just want uh, a, a basic thing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my, um, let's see, place actors window. I'm going to put that next to the outliner here. And I'm going to go and start with lights. So I'm going to start with directional light um, for, for reference, actually. Uh, well, it's just basic setup. So we'll go with a directional light and then we'll go with a skylight. And then in visual effects, we're going to want sky atmosphere. So that's where we're going to start getting this in. Um, let's move these sort of away from the grid. So somewhere in the middle here. Um, I mean, you can drag and drop volumetric clouds right in and it's going to look okay. Um, better than nothing, but I'm not going to do that right now because uh, a lot of my shots, I don't think you're going to see the clouds. Um, you're going to want stuff like height fog. Um, there's basic, basic shapes here. I'm going to drag a, 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 grab a cube in uh, and reset that location. Scale this up. And I'll take uh, a sphere for reference in terms of how that's looking. Um, my own settings, my own personal settings, you can also need a volume. So let's go to volumes here. And I'm just gonna type in post because there's actually quite a lot of volumes. So we want post-processing volume. Um, hopefully you're aware of what post-processing volume does, but it's, uh, it's what's gonna control the post effects on your screen. Um, and we just wanna to remember to set this to unbound, which means that when I'm outside of the volume, so we can see this square. When I'm outside of the volume, um, I can see everything that's happening inside it. And then um, we're gonna want to go to exposure and we're gonna want to really make sure that this is, I think it's either one, one or zero, zero. Um, and the exposure compensation here could be zero. We can maybe bring these back to one, one. Like I, I thought, I'm pretty sure it was zero, zero, zero. Um, and the reason this looks a bit crazy is um, the lighting value here is set to 10. And 10 is the default, so 10 might be all right. I mean, you could, you could push the post-processing volume uh, exposure up and down depending on what you want. Like for example, I was making another scene uh, one time that needed really flat lighting, but big global illumination. Um, so I really had to go low on the exposure values and like low on the lighting values to try and push the contrast way down. Um, but then also a lot of scenes might need really high values on the lighting. Um, I think the general consensus is what looks good. Um, I don't know how these real world values work. I'm not a pure lighting artist or anything like that. It really is just what looks good. Um, there's plenty of other tutorials out there that will go over the real world values that you can add into your engine. Um, I find 10 by default with those default settings that I've just set up to be too bright. And again, you've got two options there. You can change the exposure compensation to try and, um, to try and make that look good. And then you've got to keep in mind that all your materials are going to be darker than they should be unless they're in light um, or you've got um, to change the brightness value of your light 
um, which you've also got to make sure that you're paying attention to how that looks um, and how that's going to be responding to materials. If it's too dark, you, you know, it's going to look weird. So um, let's add in a another few cubes just to make sure that our default scene here is getting towards what we want. So let's add in a few cubes as uh, as a test. And I just lowered this to four looks now and it's still looking uh, really bright in there. So let's uh, make sure that this exposure, oh, that's because that's gone back to one. So I'm going to bring that down to zero. Um, and it's on one by default for the exposure compensation. Um, we can also have a look at what this would look like if we hit these back arrows just to go back to normal. And this, this is what the default lighting is reckoning. Um, and that shadow is way off. Uh, lighting position. So yeah, um, check your values. I like to go with um, either zero zero on those, which isn't doesn't seem to work anymore. Sorry, you can't see it behind my head. On the on the uh, min and max brightness, um, or I guess it has to be one one on those, and it starts to look good with exposure compensation of zero, um, and build for this view. If it looks too bright, lower the brightness. I mean, this is a pure white surface, so um, how bright should a pure white surface look? Um, if it was a mid-gray surface, how's the light reacting to that? All, all the things like that. So yeah, that's it, I think, for the setup. Um, I can't think of anything else I would do. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching.